Greeting, my brothers and sisters. Today, we want to remember our brother in Christ and podcasting uncle, Gabe Patillo, who passed away this past week on April 12th at the age of 42 after a battle with cancer. He was not only one of the founding members of the Married to the Games podcast, nor merely Toby Max hype man and right-hand man, but he was a husband to his beautiful wife, Jenny, and a fantastic father to his three kids, Amara, Remy, and Milo. And we dedicate this intro to you, the chubby ninja himself. Oh, yes, yes, y'all. Yes, yes, y'all. You know what it is. It's them kids and wives and nine two fives. But we are the Good Morning Guys, episode 293. It's your boy, Lucas Ham Swisher, along with Patrick Novosel, Mark Boucher, and Ryan Isley. And of course, as always, we are talking games, God, and life, and we are so glad you are here with us. Mm. Great job, mm. man. That was good. Solid. Oh, man. It's so it's so bittersweet to do that intro, to think of him, and mm -hmm. that's what this show is all about today. We are going to celebrate Gay Patillo, our brother in Christ, like I said and uh, share some memories. Um, yeah, I I don't know if you guys want to start with last week. Maybe talk through where you were, how you've been um, this past over this past weekend. And maybe we kind of start with the tough reflection first and then jump into the memories. Sure. sure. Yeah. Okay. Mark, you want to go first? I'll take it. Yeah, so I was, so when when we found out that, you know, that Gabe was going to be uh, leaving uh, Toby Mac, touring with him, I just figured, you know, his voiceover uh, career was kind of taken off and it was to a point where it was sustainable and he was just wanting to stay home and, and be with family. Um, and so that was pretty much my thinking was that he was just, looking to do that and you know i remember obviously it was about a year or so ago a little more than a year ago when he had um the the surgery uh with his i think it was his pancreas uh something going on in there and that was the last we heard of it and so um you know it was, it was friday night um we had just um you know obviously pat was there too we were we had just finished up a like a team bonding activity we actually played some jackbox uh we played quiplash with the jackbox party pack um and um i had just gotten out of out of all that and um i know ryan had made mention of of someone in the complex where he works that had that had passed away and we were certainly praying for him and i thought you guys were still talking about that person but then, you know, you made mention of like his blood family and the MTTG community. And I'm like, and we, I had just listened to that episode earlier in the day when they talked about Gabe, like same thing, know, man. he's being, he's sick. Um, and I'm not sure what happened there, but you're our back. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so um, that he was very sick. Um, and that, you know, that he really needed some prayer and, um, then it, then it clicked with me and I looked in the, in the discord and I saw that, that they had posted a, a graphic, um, saying, you know, that this was a heavy, with a heavy heart that we announced the passing of Gabe Patillo. And, and so for the first, like two or three days, like it just didn't feel real at all. Um, cause like. What are you talking about? Gabe's going to be around for forever, not forever, forever, but you know, you know, Gabe's going to be around. He's been on the podcast for, you know, what, 12 years. And, and, and like, what are you talking about? And it just, it really started sinking in and I just came completely unglued. Um, that Friday night, I just came out and I, I just literally like yelled out and, and Kristen was right there. She's like, what, what is happening? And I'm like, Gabe passed away and I just, I could not, 
comprehend that. It just didn't feel real. I I looked at the at the the graphic like multiple times over the past over the next couple of days and I just I couldn't believe it. I was I was completely, you know, obviously highly upset and just dumb just dumbfounded by the fact mm-hmm. that he could be gone. And then um you know, they they posted that GoFundMe uh page and I look in there and it says cancer and I'm like man and and then of course um and and i'll let you guys talk a little bit more about you know they had basically a big open family meeting kind of thing in discord on the married to the games discord and you know they talked about yeah he he had only been given technically like 11 months to live and this was back in november december when they when he had the surgery they told him that he would he wouldn't live to see another birthday which jokes on them he lived longer um but um still like knowing that the past year year and a half he knew he had cancer and was going through treatments and things like that it made so much more of things that he said in the past make so much more sense um like with him stepping away and then um, when he was at 600, he he just off the cuff happened to mention, oh, there almost wasn't a 600. And we were all like, what? What is that supposed to mean? And and we sort of thought, well, because of it was around spring break and Tim and, and Piper were traveling and things like that. Maybe that's what he what he meant. And they maybe couldn't have made it work. But um, it was much, much deeper than that, um, obviously. So, yeah, it was just completely floored over the next couple of days it's still it's still raw for sure but but i'll let you all talk (laughs) yeah man um so like you said we were we were doing a, a team bonding event and i had i had looked and um i saw that ryan had posted that someone passed away and i thought the same thing i was like what I didn't know he, that person passed away was part of the marriage of the games family. Like I, I'm just like, I, just, I didn't even think anything of it. Why would I, why would I think that someone had passed away in the marriage of the games community? That's, that's my, my first thought. And then I look and I see that I have hundred plus notifications in, in discord. And I'm like, what is happening? And so I, I look and I read the, the post that they, the, the image that they put on discord that Gabe, Gabe passed away and I had to reread that. I, had, I was just in shock. Like, did I read that right? And this was me reading this by myself my family was not in the house they were camping um and i needed my wife at that time and so i uh that night there was a discord uh video chat with several of us uh including chris ed and tim who are the co-hosts of the marriage of the games podcast and i just sat there like everyone was talking about memories and awesome things and just their whole story of how they came to married to the games how they started listening when they started listening and things like that i was i was just sitting there like i i couldn't speak i wanted to speak but i couldn't my body just wouldn't let me and um and i couldn't do it anymore so i had i it was it was too much for me so i just left the video call yeah and i texted the wife and i i i I just let her know that you know gabe had passed away and i needed her and um so but she was camping and she was she couldn't come back so 
that, that night I, I couldn't get any sleep. My body got like two hours of sleep on Friday night because to me, the Married to the Games community is a big part of my life. Um, the co-hosts are a big part of my life. I've been listening to them for 11 years. I started listening around episode 42, 43, something like that. Mm-hmm. And there are over 600 episodes now. And so uh, we, it's a weekly ritual for me to, to listen to their new episode. And when I, w- when I was like, I'm, I'm not going to hear Gabe's intro anymore. And so I'm going through a whole, a whole roller coaster of emotions. My thoughts were jumbled. I couldn't focus. I didn't know what to do. Um, so on on Saturday, um, just thinking about Gabe, I was like, I'm gonna go to some used video game stores because I knew that's something he'd love to do. And so, just me for five hours driving all over the city uh looking at used video games and it was it was nice when i when i got into the used game store it felt like my my the weight was lifted off of off my shoulders I, I stopped thinking about it and looking at games enjoying enjoying the games um and then as soon as i left each store i just couldn't i couldn't hold it together um so i i uh, my daughter was was going to be coming home for for dinner and i was like you know what i'm gonna stop at the grocery store i'm gonna make make some steaks for for us we're gonna have a nice family meal and she ends up staying with her friends so i just threw the steaks in the fridge you know just why i I have no desire to eat you know i'm so so shocked with what happened yeah um and you know so it's just me just me again on saturday saturday night and getting on another discord chat and again not being able not being able to talk and then tim calls me out he's like hey, pat how you doing and he might have said bones how you doing but uh he did uh, the Okay, that was the that was the first time I said anything, and it was it was hard. It was really really hard to um, come to terms of it, you know. Yeah. Um, and now while I'm thinking about all this, it's not just Gabe that him passing has been very difficult for me. It's very difficult because he he leaves behind a family. It's all good, man. And Take your time. And I don't want I don't want that for my kids. Yeah. So and just doing that alone was hard. I didn't have the I wouldn't I wanted to hug my wife and I couldn't. And that hurt that even to start more because his wife can't hold Gabe anymore. Yeah. Yeah, Kristen Kristen said the same thing to me. She's like, I I thought about she's like, this is the first morning where she's not able to wake up and have him right next to her. And that's a very, very sobering thought. You know, it 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 really brings to mind that we aren't promised tomorrow. And um it's important to make the best of today for sure. But sorry, Pat, continue. Yeah, so she came home on Sunday afternoon and she dropped her stuff and just hugged me. We hugged for a pretty long time. I I felt weak. I felt like I couldn't stand up. I was so so happy that she was she was back. I was so happy that I was able to hug her. Just the thought of her not coming home her, her, just a hurt. And uh, I always joke with her because um, she's my soulmate. She's the one I want to spend the rest of my life with. 
She's the one I want to laugh with, joke with, cry with. Um, and I joke with her and I say, you know, just, I love her to death, you know, and I say, don't die. Whatever you do, don't die. And, and we joke about that because I don't know what I would do without her. And, um, she laughs it off and just, just something we just joke about, but I'm more serious than I am joking because it's, it's tough. And then when I heard, when I, with Gabe and his family, it's just, it's just, I'm not, I can't joke about that anymore. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know if you guys know this, but I don't, I don't have people who've died in my family. I've had grand grandparents pass away and aunts and uncles who I'm not close with. I've never dealt with grief like this because I thought I've thought of gave his family. Absolutely. Whenever I met him, you know, he, he I felt like we didn't skip a beat. He was always interested in what I was doing. He would remember our last conversation, which I don't even know how he does that. Uh, yeah, how he did that, man. It was, it was, it was insane. He was a, it was a superpower. Um, I met him a few times, you know, just he introduced me to Toby Mac. I didn't even know who he was when I, when he just introduced me. Um, yeah, it was, uh, so a lot of, a lot of memories, a lot of good memories, um, with Gabe. And then, so on Sunday, Sunday night, I had to go to bed early because I was leaving to go to Florida, uh, for work for a few days. And so, I'm still grieving hard. And I, again, I don't have my wife to hug anymore yeah. for at least a few days. Um, nobody at work knows Gabe like I do, like we do, like the community does. Um, so I didn't have any outlet. Uh, each night I did get on to uh, Discord chat and did some video chat. Um, I've and cried, laughed um, with the community, and it it did it did help, but it was still very very hard. Um, on Monday night, we listened to the um, the Remembering Gabe episode that Married to the Games put out because I didn't I could not listen to it alone. I needed I needed someone to listen to it with, and I listened to it with uh, Lord Zucor. Castless and Sean Capri and I cried with them and it was it was a, a just another good cry stuff I just needed to get out and um I got home on Wednesday uh and as I'm leaving the airport I'm in the car leaving the airport I turn on Star 93.3 which is the local Christian radio station and wouldn't you know it, the first song that comes on is Ryan Stevenson with Gabe Patillo, Eye of the Storm. And I when I wow. when it turned on, I was I was like really excited because that's one of my favorite songs, you know. Yeah. Um and <sighs> Gabe Gabe solo was came up and I sang along, took a video of it, and I was having a good time. I was like, this is I love this song. And as soon as it ended, I lost it again. Because I haven't, it's, he's, he's the closest person I've ever lost. And it's, it's really, really hard. Yeah. Um, so got home and both kids were happy to see me. Wife was happy to see me. And um, I feel good. I feel good um, during the day. But it's because I'm, working my mind is focused elsewhere but as soon as that stops talking about it now it's just really really hard yeah yep someone else go <laughs> i guess i'll go um pretty much echo the same stuff uh yeah that that last friday was uh, a weird one for sure. Um, I was at work and um, 
we just it happens in the industry of housing stuff older people will fall or somebody won't be able to get to their door to unlock it for their their daughter or their son or whoever's coming to do a visit for them and this was just one of those times and it happened then and i was i didn't know it at the time but like i was just like it was just weird and surreal because it hasn't ha like i've only had to deal with that once really and i felt like it was just maybe that was just preparing me for what was coming next yeah um because like pretty much i was i was in a, a separate discord with uh some other folks and we were kind of uh, just we had i guess we had all just kind of finished listening to that episode that they put out where they were asking for prayer for Gabe and his family and everything. And um, just something wasn't sitting right. Wasn't sitting right with me. Um, and I guess it wasn't sitting right with the other guys. Cause they were like, just kind of like, like it's Gabe, is Gabe. Okay. Like, cause this was a serious episode and we haven't had like a serious family talk episode like this. So they got to speculating and I was just trying to like, just, I was like, Gabe's fine, guys. Just calm down. We're gonna we're gonna get through this. Everybody just keep your pants on. Let's, yep. let's just <laughs> let's just get to the end of the day, okay? And then somebody sends a screenshot photo from uh Gabe's dad, his Facebook page. And it just, it, I think it just said my, uh, a lot of people were asking about Gabe. He's gone to be with Jesus. Here's some pictures. And I was just like, no, nah. like there's too many fake things on Facebook. I don't, I don't, I'm not trusting that until I like hear from the guys over at MTTG. No sooner than I said that they posted in the discord and I just <sighs> stared at my screen for a good five, 10 minutes. Yeah. It's like, just, I, <laughs> it's crazy, man. It's, Life is just such a fragile, fragile thing. Yeah. Like I was in the grocery store when I was looking at my phone and I just stood at the, in the door, like where people are trying to come in and go out, like walking all around me, just staring at my phone. Yeah. Like, I, I, I don't believe, I don't believe this. And then I go, and then I start seeing all the messages flooding in, and I'm like, <sighs> just def just completely deflated. The day was already messed up from the previous event, and then this just <sighs> just added to it and compounded. It, and I just, yeah, I. Uh, I had to call my wife like immediately. I was just like, Gabe dead. I was like, we just, I just saw him. That was the first time that I met Gabe. It was episode 600. And it was brief because I just had to go out to the car and get ready to go back home. And just, it, well, that was like a month ago. Hmm. It's just unreal. Yeah. To me. Um, so, yeah, then I got whatever groceries I was getting and then I got in the car and then I just sat there and stared at my phone again and at that message and cried a little bit. 
got home. Um, and as soon as I got home, I called a family meeting for us and I was like, we're praying for them right now. Yeah. Um, like this, there's, I, I need this. I, I know they need it, but I need it. Um, and yeah, just since then, it's kind of just been like, like what Pat said, it's just in the back of my mind, like, me and my wife joke like that too. And like, I mean, it, like you said, it's, it's not really a joke no more, man. Like it, it really isn't like at any point, either one of us. And I would hate, absolutely hate it to leave her behind with three kids I would just there's no way I couldn't do it if she'd left I would I'd be a wreck mm. probably for the rest of my life yeah yeah uh, Gabe was a awesome dude I could just tell it in I didn't listen. I haven't been listening to Married to the Games for nearly as long as you guys have. I came in somewhere around like four something. Mm -hmm. um, like I guess after COVID. Right. <laughs> um, but like just hearing him talk, I could hear the genuine nature of love that he just exuded. It was just, you could feel the love through whatever, whatever medium you decided. Like if you wanted to watch some of the videos that he was in or like just listening to the podcast, like you could hear just how much he loved his people. Yeah. It's yeah. Dude, dude had Jesus all over and through him. Like, yes, they did. Yeah. Is I guess nuts. yeah. Yeah. Like if you think about like how God said David was a man after his own heart. I think you have to throw Gabe up in there. Yeah. Absolutely. True that. Yeah. Well, um, when I found out, well, back up a little bit. Uh, like Patrick, I probably started listening to Married to the Games around episode 40 or 50. I think I still remember the, the thumbnail of the episode or one of the first episodes I listened to was like to infinity and beyond. It had like Buzz Lightyear on the thumbnail. It was like episode 51 or 50. Yeah. Um, and yeah, listened faithfully for years upon years upon years. Like married to the games was my first, my first gaming community, like for real podcasting community. Um, and really to this point in my life is second only to the good morning guys community that, you know, we started, but because of them. So and and because of Gabe as one of the founding members of Married to the Games. But kind of like not maybe not kind of like Ryan on I don't know. Oh I had a mix of shock, uh sadness, thinking about the family he'd left behind. I had a mix of guilt. Um because I haven't been listening. I haven't been following uh, with Mary. I've been following any podcasting other than the podcast I do with you guys. I just life, the season of life I've been in, especially for the past four or five months, but even beyond, even into last year, um, my job was demanding a lot more of me than I had time to listen to podcasting. And I really got disconnected and it really felt like I, I had 
I had pretty instant regret when I found out. Why didn't I stay connected? Why didn't I listen, find a way to listen more? Um, yeah. It was, it was, it was a very mixed bag of emotions. Um, my family and I, Friday night's our movie night. And I, we, Mindy was making popcorn. The kids were upstairs on their devices waiting patiently. I was kind of back and forth. We were prepping to watch a movie and I saw the post. Um, for the most part, I don't have notifications on for Discord. So I wasn't like blowing up or anything. I didn't realize. I just check it on occasion so it doesn't consume my focus. Um, and I got on and just saw all the messages and I was like, what is happening right now? And I saw that that graphic with the Married to the Games controller with the heart below it and saying that Gabe had passed away. And it was a gut punch. I I knew he had had the surgery. I knew he had faced some challenges. But in my mind, since I hadn't been following, he had gotten past it. And yeah, he had, he had beaten whatever it was. Um, and so I was just blown away. I told my wife, uh, and that's probably when I got the most emotional between that. And then after she finished making the movie popcorn and before we watched a movie with speaking, honestly, I didn't really want to watch at that point, but it was just kind of, we were in family movie mode, so I just went with it. But we we prayed, and I definitely uh, was feeling it the most then, just praying for their family and lifting them up. Yeah, um, I have I have lost a number of people in my life, as I've already told you guys, and so my <laughs> viewpoint on death, the way I deal with death, is not as I, I've. I kind of hit my emotional, uh, just the the waves and things over the years. I've become a little more, um, I, don't, I don't know if resistance the right word or weathered. I, I don't want to say I'm calloused, but because I do feel it and I do see it. And the like the compassion I feel for not just, uh, I don't know just for everyone that's lost is just so great. And I want to help people grieve. And I think the hard thing is I still haven't figured out how to, how to be alongside people from far away. I'm more right. of a face to face kind of guy. So I have a hard time with the, the being digitally available. And so I went into the weekend and even going into this week, just it's kind of in the back of my head what's going on. I'm praying for the family. I'm praying for the married to the games community, everybody that knows them. Um, but for the most part, life's still very busy and things continue on. One of the things that really hit me, uh, as I was running this last week, this last weekend, the day after I went on a, a, a really long run in part because of this, because for me, running has become prayer time and I just kind of lay it all out and I don't stop running until I lay it all out before the Lord. And uh, I was running and the sun came out and it was beautiful. And then all of a sudden I realized I'm really white and <laughs> I have not put on sunblock. Whoops. <laughs> and so I'm like, I'm going to get burnt. I'm going to get in trouble with my wife. So what am I going to do? And so I started running in the shadows. I started seeking the protection of the shade. And I found this half kilometer section and just started running back and forth in it. And while I was running in it to protect myself from the sun, I started thinking of life. And how we get burnt sometimes. We get burnt bad. And it hurts. And how God offers shade. And how God offers in the eye of the storm protection and love. And I just took that in. And I just soaked it in. 
I was reminded of Psalm 91. The one who lives under the protection of the Most High dwells in the shadow of the Almighty. The yep. Almighty, yep. I will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. He himself will deliver you. The Lord is near the brokenhearted. This is Psalm 34 connected to it. He saves those crushed in spirit. Many adversities come to the one who is righteous, but the Lord delivers him from them all. And I just clung to that, just grabbed hold of God. And just, that's what gets me through every day. And, yeah. and, I, and I know for all of us here, and for many of us in the Married to the Games community and the Good Morning Guys, like at the core of our being, he's the, he's the reason. And he's the reason that we don't just mourn and grieve in, in freedom, but we celebrate. Because right. Gabe Patillo, the chubby ninja, he was, like you guys said, he was a light for Christ. Salt, light, voice, he, laughter. Like his laughter was infectious. And so I think it's very appropriate that we transition to sharing a, a memory or two, celebrating what God did uh, with a 42-year-old man that is beyond what me, myself, could imagine accomplishing. Like just the people he touched. Uh, it is just so evident in the response to the GoFundMe, the responses online, the stories, the and it's just man, he made he made everybody better. Yeah. And that's what that's that's what it means to be a Christian. Like that's what it means to follow Christ is to make others better. Like that's that's the gospel is is to do that. And he did that. And we are so much better for knowing him and having the opportunity to walk alongside them, whether in person or digitally. So, yeah. 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 I mean, like there were, there were, there were days where I, and there, when right after that happened, there was one day where I walked outside and it was absolutely beautiful outside. And I just looked up and I said, how is this a world without Gabe Patillo in it? How is this, how is this happening? And I remember what, um, and Ed said it in the, um, in the private, the uh, the Discord group, as well as on the episode, the podcast episode, um, he told, you know, um, the story of his dad and and yeah. how you know his whole, you know, platoon. And I think there was a priest that you know they were hit. They were hit with like some sort of a a, a missile blast or some sort of bomb, yeah. and everyone died except for his dad. And he was, you know, he was told essentially, you know you're still here because God has a plan for you. He has a reason. He has something for you to do. And when you're done, when you do the thing I want you to do, then I will take you home. And, um, you know, just the fact that Gabe was here to give God the glory. Gabe was here because of God's plan. He, he did what God wanted him to do. And when he did what God wanted him to do, then it was time to come home. And just to think about, like, you know, I talked about he wasn't even supposed to live to his next birthday, and he lived longer. He lived several months longer than that. And it's just like, what did he do? What was it that he did that God wanted him, to, needed him to do? Mm -hmm. And he finally did it. And, and so ultimately I, I say that with, you know, just, just knowing that Gabe was a, he was a faithful servant. He was always, you know, sharing the love and joy of, of Christ, you know, with people, you know, he, night after night, he had tons of opportunities to share the hope that he had in Jesus. And the fact that he touched so many people across the, the country and, and even around the world in some, in yeah. some spots. Um, and the fact that I was able to cross paths with him in some way, shape or form back in 2012, when I was struggling 
really bad with anxiety and I needed something to focus my mind on. And I started getting into podcasting and their podcast was the first, one of the first podcasts I came up with. And, you know, God in a silly way, but still he used it to carry me through that, that, that time of severe anxiety. And mm. the fact that not only did I get to listen to the podcast and become a fan of the podcast and, and really follow what they were doing, but the fact that we became friends and he inspired, you know, all of us to do a podcast, a silly little podcast because of the awesome stuff that they would do with their podcast. And not only that, he's on the show. He's, he's been a supporter. He's been a proponent of our show. He's been on two or three episodes now. And the fact that he came alongside of us like that and was always like, ready like we, if we asked him hey would you want to come on for this he's like absolutely when mm -hmm. let me know and he was always always had that attitude and he was all he always made time for people even though dude's a busy man and especially especially within the last year you know i'm sure between at one point touring doing voiceover work doing the podcast being a family man uh, being a husband and and dealing with cancer treatments and things like that and he made time for people i mean the world needs needs more gay patillos like that you know, yeah. so uh, i i absolutely loved him like you said you know he always seemed to know he always seemed to remember exactly what you know where you were the last time you talked um, what was going on and, and asked about this and this and this, you know, we got several opportunities to, to have lunch with him whenever he would come into town um, for a show or in the area. Um, and he had always, yeah, let's do, let's do lunch. Let's do dinner. What, what's, let's do it. And um, he always made you feel welcome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, did. And so that's why it was never, you know, just a, just a podcast. It was never, you know, just this distant, like, like you would with like a musician, like a band or something like that, where you're, you feel that distance. Um, you were a family. And so that's, what's special about that community. That's what was special about Gabe. And yeah. Yeah. Gabe was, I don't, I don't, I do not have a bad memory about Gabe. Yeah. All of it was happy, joyful, funny, interesting, serious. Never had a bad interaction with him. And just a testament of who he was as a person. Uh, you knew he was, he loved God. You knew he was faithful um, in everything that he did. <clears throat> he did everything for the glory of God. And it's something that is inspiring um, when someone like that will, with all the things that are going on, will find time for you, whether that's five minutes or two hours, he will find time. To be with you um i do i do have a little a little solace in the fact that he's with him now yep um which is wonderful and uh there's a there's a verse in john chapter 11 he say he says jesus says i am the resurrection and the life the one who believes in me will live even though they die and whoever lives by believing in me will never die. And, I, and so it's Gabe, you know, he's that knowing that how much he believed in him while he was here, knowing that he's now with him. And he's Racing. healed. 
no there is no pain. There's no more cancer, man. No yeah. more cancer. He is with him. He is in the best place. Um, probably dancing. Know. Probably singing. Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> for sure, for sure. <laughs> Laughing it up. Did you see that yeah. one video where he was doing some like major MJ moves? He was doing some Michael Jackson type stuff. <laughs> he had hilarious some on him. He yeah, probably then took over Heaven's Choir. He's like, no, I'm going to tell y'all how to do this. <laughs> I'm doing it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh. <sighs> yeah, for me, I uh, I only only encountered him once in person. Um, it was when we went to Kings Island in 2019. First time I met uh, Patrick, Mark, Ronnie all together. Um, and... Uh, Gabe was there and honestly it was like for me it was like meeting a celebrity at that yeah. point I had already listened to him on the podcast for I don't know like six straight years like every single week like listening to him and then Toby Mac I grew up uh, loving DC talk Toby Mac so like he at first he was he was just a cool guy because he was like Toby Max hype man. But then over those six years of listening to him, he became a bigger celebrity to me than Toby Mac was. And so even when we met him in person and we went to the Toby Mac concert, got pictures next to Toby Mac, I was like, Hey, what's up, Toby? So anyways, Gabe, like that's, <laughs> that's how I felt. I just, every moment I wanted to talk with him and, and just, you know, and he was exactly like he is on the podcast is exactly how it was in person. It was, you know, there was no, no bits, no acts. Um, he, like, I remember we were going from like trying to go from coaster to coaster, ride to ride to do different things. And he was just asking me, like, we were joking around, of course, and talking about video games. But then there were just moments where he's like, so tell me about your mission in Brazil. And like, just being interested. And I, I think it's so funny that, you know, after all these years of being a missionary here of, you know, only visiting family and friends every every two years or so. Uh, the questions like that they don't they don't come as much as you think. Like someone just being like, "So what is life like in Brazil?" It just becomes old hat. And so when someone actually wants to like engage with your life and ask you those questions, it's refreshing. Like and and for me, I I get a lot of enjoyment out of asking people those kind of questions. And so. Uh, but when it returns my way, I always notice and uh, it always just warms my heart. And so that was like some of the first conversations we had. The other thing that I remember is when I did my one and only 24 hour stream for Extra Life, uh, <laughs> yeah. where I I almost swore off gaming at the end because of my terrible decision to not sleep for 24 hours and then play the hardest boss in God of War. <laughs> Um, I, uh, in, in, in a portion of that 24 hour stream, like every hour I tried to have a person with me and Gabe was one of those for one of those hours. And I remember if I think I remember right for sure. We played rocket league. I can't remember if we played another game, but I just remember how easy it was to talk to him. Like there wasn't any like, so what's up? Like it was just, it just naturally, he just was a naturally comforting, warm person, yeah. and uh, just a joy to be around, whether digitally or in person. And uh, yeah, so those are those are a couple of my memories yeah, of Gabe I, Dilla. I, I meant to um, and when you when you said Kings Island, it reminded me it was in 2018, and it was like right after episode 300, and he uh, was in town. Uh, they were going to toby mac and and all them were gonna be playing at king's island and i had messaged him and i was like hey uh you got time he's like he's like yeah but i can't really leave can you come up here <laughs> and he's he's like if you can and i was like well i'm kind of the boss so i'll I'm, i'll just come <laughs> <laughs> so uh i was like all right everyone i'm taking a long lunch so I went went up to go go see him. He's he's like, just come to the back and I'll I'll let you in. We'll go to my trailer. And I was like, cool. So you know, as I as I'm walking up, he's just standing there. 
waiting for me. And we walk over to his trailer. We, we walk in and it's just me and him. You show me around. I sit down at the booth. We're chatting for a little bit. Uh, and in walks, walks a guy. He, uh, he sits, sits down and I shake his hand. And I was, I was like, Hey, you know, I'm Pat. And, and I can't remember what he said. And Gabe was like, you know, that's Toby Mac, right? <laughs> and I was, and at this point I, I hadn't, I, I wasn't listening to Christian radio, or Christian music or anything at the time. And I was like, I'm only here for you, man. I don't know who this guy is sitting across. The <laughs> <laughs> and so, which was refreshing to Toby because I was in his trailer, not geeking out or being all, you know, fanboying out about, about, about Toby. So it was a really cool conversation just to just us three, just hanging out and um, very, very good memory. Uh, and as I was leaving, I told him, I was, I was like, Hey, uh, we're still, we haven't sang eye of the storm at church yet. And so he's, he's like, he's like, he's like, who's your, who's your um, uh, worship pastor. And I was like, Jeremy, he's, he's like, let's do a video and I'll tell him to, to that he needs to put, he needs to put this in the rotation <laughs> and he took a video of it. And I was just like, oh man, I just, it just, he's such a good guy and uh, made me feel loved, comforted. Uh, just, just, it was just a absolute pr- pleasure uh, whenever he was around. Yeah. Yeah. Agreed. All right. Well, why don't I jump into some joiner memories, some joiner responses? Uh, we're not the only four to have been impacted um, by the passing, but more importantly, the life of Gabe Patillo. We have more joiners that need to be shared. So, Kevin, Gamer Parents Podcast of the Gamer Parents Podcast, uh, he had this to say. Hold on, I got a hair in my mouth. He didn't say that. I said that. (laughs) It's real good. I was going to play it off, but it really was weird. Okay. Okay, here we go. This is Kevin again, not me. Gabe Patillo and the rest of MTTG was the first podcast I started listening to. I was drawn to Gabe's love of God, of other people, and of course, video games. Gabe and his enthusiastic, loving nature inspired me to try my own hand in podcasts. I would like to say Gabe has rubbed off on me in some ways. For example, playing a lot of game, uh, playing a lot of a game is now playing the mess out of it. Uh, <laughs> that game, as Gabe would often say, Gabe talking about GMG is what led me to this podcast and this amazing community as well. I'm going to miss hearing Gabe's voice each Friday, especially his dad jokes and Christmas movie synopsis. Ah, oh, Christmas yeah, movie synopsis. Mm. I can hear that fire crackling. Uh, it always got me. Thanks for doing a tribute episode to Gabe. I know it's not easy. Love you guys. Love you, Kevin. Love you too, Kevin. Love you, Kev dog. Love you, Kevin. All right. TP. The old bacon wiper. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anyways, that just came to mind. I thought I'd say it out loud. The bacon old wiper. bacon wiper. The old bacon wiper. <laughs> Just had to get one like, in. Like we've called him that before. <laughs> <laughs> nope. Now he's been called that. All yeah. right. Just Tim Pollan had this to say. I found MTTG in 2017 through Ben Palmer, who was a writer for a now defunct podcast, PS Nation. I followed the guys on Twitter and almost immediately was DM'd by Gabe welcoming me. Shortly after that, Gabe mentioned on the show that he was going to be in my area with Toby Mack. I was going to reach out, but didn't because it felt like quiet, Rayla. It felt like stalking, LOL. (laughs) Two years pass, and now I understand that this is what he does. Gabe is the ambassador. So every time he was close, I messaged him. Uh, We had coffee, chatted about games and life, life and games. It's weird to think that I met Gabe twice before I met Ed, Tim, Chris, and let alone any of the GMG crew who now I'd say are some of my closest friends. I'm sad that our friend is gone, but I am blessed to have known him and that I have Gabe to thank for meeting you guys. Love you. Thanks for making me cry again. Peace. 
Jeez. <laughs> Dude, Fuck that's too, crazy. Oh, he, man. he was the ambassador. Is the ambassador. That's awesome. Love you. Love you, man. I'm sorry I called you a bacon wiper. At least you love bacon. <laughs> <laughs> No, nah, I don't apologize. You, you said it. It's, it's done. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to own it. Uh, Travis Pospisil, using his real name for the first time since 2019. <laughs> um, I started listening to MTTG at episode 63 and never looked back. After that, many episodes and all of the stories in between then and now, you get to know a person. I think we know every last aspect of everybody on this show at this point. I first met Gabe in Rochester, New York. The wife and I had Toby Mac tickets. Gabe texted me and said, what view do you have? I sent him a birdie eye view from the nosebleed section. He wasn't happy about that. And a few minutes later, we were front row. Man. Wow. <laughs> Crazy. Oh, Dude. That's awesome. Um, he continues, Gabe's passing has affected me far more than I thought it would. I've thought about him often and still can't believe he is gone. I wish I had gone to 600. Dude, yeah. Travis, I am right there with you. Yeah. Because, like it already like hurt me that I couldn't go to 600 because of COVID. But man, when I found out he passed, it made it 10 times worse. I was like, I absolutely hate you, COVID. Hate you so much right now. Yeah, for yeah. sure. I'm glad I got to meet him, at least even if it was brief. I yeah. do regret not taking a picture with him, though. Yeah. yeah. And I should have gave him the Novacil hug. You should have. You always give a Novacil hug to every <laughs> single person from now on. Pat, next time I see you, you're getting the biggest, longest Novacil hug. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'll tell you what. I, yeah, I, I told, uh, I went down to Florida for a work trip and I met one of my, one of my employees for the first time and I, I told her about the Novacil hug. And as we were saying goodbye to each other on Wednesday, uh, I hug her and she does the Nova cell hug. What? She, <laughs> and so That's hilarious. I was like, well, this is meant to be. This, uh, you're the best. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Yeah. So if, if we like it, Ryan, it, next time you see him, if you do the Nova cell hug on him, does that mean you hug four times in a row? Yes, because yeah, he's, he's going to do his Novaso hug. I have yeah. mine too. Yeah, we just yeah. got a hug. We just got a hug all Man. day, just all day, all hug. day, every day. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, next up, Luke Worm Riffle, uh, one of our newer joiners to the GMG Discord. Welcome, Luke. Uh, I started listening to MTTG in 2020 and thought it was such a cool coincidence that Gabe toured with Toby Mac. I used to listen to DC Talk when I was younger. I also thought it was cool when I found out he was going to be in Spokane in 2022. Like Tim, I thought it would be weird to go see him. Haha, ha. he was only about 40 minutes away. In 2023, he was going to be out there again and said I should come say hi. I didn't because it was a Thursday night and I had to work Friday. And I'm sure something else was going on. When I found out Toby was going to be in Spokane again in 2024 back in February, I told myself I was going to go see him. That time for sure, I was super excited. Then we all heard his dream came true about doing voiceover work full-time and wasn't going to be touring anymore. I was so happy for him and sad that he wasn't going to be here. Over the years of listening to him, I've grown to really look up to him as a man, father, and husband. He always seemed to be doing it right, even when it sounded hard. I'm going to really miss not hearing about his wife and kids every week. I'm going to miss his Christmas movies. I'm going to miss his laugh. Just his voice altogether. I've grown to love the other guys and their family as well, and I feel so terrible for you all who personally knew him. It's heartbreaking for everyone to go through this. Love you guys. Love you, Luke. Love you too, Luke. Thanks. Love Luke. you. Love you, Luke. Mm. So I don't know if you have it pulled up, but we also I have... don't. Okay, so we have. Some... But I knew you did. Yeah, so we have some joiners on. Uh, both Twitter and Facebook. What? Uh, yeah. So let me go ahead and get that up real quick. Which one? Twitter, or Facebook? Twitter. Twitter book. I hate you. MySpace. 
X book. All right, we're going to Twitter. There it is, 2019 are you, Kings. Are you Island. able to read that? Uh, yes. And okay. One and three, two. I met Gabe. Oh, sorry. This is Arctic M77. This is Arctic Warlocks, by the Matt. way. Yes. Uh, at Arctic M77. He said, I met Gabe in person three times and was lucky to see him in concert and to play video slash arcade games with him. We met once at Kings Island and he, uh, he was noticed by other concert goers and he stopped to take photos with everyone. I cannot listen to Toby Mac without thinking of him. He was truly an awesome guy. Mm -hmm. Yes, he was. And man, every time I hear a song where Gabe is like in the background or does like a really little thing, I'm like, that's Gabe. I hear like a trumpet playing and I'm like, that's Gabe. And, uh, (laughs) yeah, I still freak out hearing him. I'd be like, I know that guy. So yeah, that was a great day. That was a good, that was a good day. First time we met. Yep. It was in person. Uh, Lucas, what are these shorts? Dude, I, lo- I love my blue I love orange plaid shorts. Okay. I still have those and I still oh. have them from time to time. So if, if I don't get to hug you in those shorts, oh, I'll make sure of it. Don't you worry. <laughs> when I come to the US, life finds a way and I will wear those shorts in the middle of December or January when I'm there. And make sure to hug you in there. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Hold on, Mindy. Ryan's coming over. Let me put on my shorts. I got to put my shorts on. <laughs> As I take off my other pants and put on my shorts. Or actually, I'll just wear the shorts just to be prepared. I'll wear those shorts under everything I wear. <laughs> I, like I just... tearaway pants. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> uh, oh, man. All right. So to Facebook. All right. Uh, Corey Drake on Facebook said, Gabe was a selfless and empathetic giant, and I feel honored to know him and be able to call him a friend and a brother. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. True that. Amen for sure. Uh, Spencer Stapleton, uh, host of the... Nurturous of Fortitude? No. Wow. Fortress of Nerditude. This <laughs> is be a strong tonight. <laughs> yep, I knew I'd mess that up. Nurturous. <laughs> <laughs> nurturous. I'm definitely going to call it the Nurturous of Fortitude. <laughs> Your That's nurturousness. You've got quite a fortitude of nurturousness right now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that means. Okay. Back to Spencer and his post. Uh, Gabe was truly a wonderful human being. He made everyone feel as if they had known him his whole life. True mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. Uh, so Gabe and I could convince each other to buy stuff with ease. One time Gabe and I were in a game store and he convinced me that I needed to buy The Witcher 3 The Wild Hunt based on his experience in the game. He talked it up like it was the best game he had ever played. So I bought it. At the same time, I went in to buy The Division. Gabe wasn't looking at it, but I told him that it had online play, and he promptly said he would only get it if I promised to play with him. We played that game all the way through to the end. We both spent way too much money on that game. Or no, with way too much money that day, but I don't regret the money at all. I cherish the experience and the good times we had playing those games. Oh, Mm -hmm. That's awesome. I got to say two things. One... Uh, I think it's hilarious that he recommended the Witcher game when he didn't get past Skellige. <laughs> I knew I mean, somebody was going to say something. You got to bring that up. I mean, the guy loved that game, but he did not get past Skellige. And that's like halfway through the game. It's amazing. But that's like yeah. the running joke, you know? It's like, I'm pretty sure at some point he's like, and you know what? I'm probably never going to get through Skellige because I'd rather yeah. just say I never made it past Skellige. <laughs> the other thing I'll say is I think... I don't know if you guys noticed, but I noticed this at some point. And I don't I don't believe he did this early on, but there's a point where Gabe started laughing like Spencer, like on the show. <laughs> like, and it would only be in certain moments and certain times he would laugh at something and just he would like this like a huh, huh, like laugh. And I just <laughs> I would hear it. And I bet you it was from them playing all of division together and that laugh so just kind of rubbing off. So many games together, just getting, uh, just 
Yeah, that's rubbing awesome. off. That's funny. I never put but that yeah. together, but I get it. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder if that was that's the connection. Funny. But it's funny how, like, you know, you pick up little laughs or little, like, just actions and things you don't realize. And that's kind of guy Gabe was, like we talked about. Like, there are so many things that I want to replicate that Gabe did. I want to be an ambassador for Christ, for GMG. Uh, yeah, just be a, be a guy like him. Yeah. Absolutely. He's a good man. Charlie Brown. Well, that is, that's everybody. Yep. Yeah. All right. Well, then I guess with that being said, and as I've lost my notes, yep. well, while you're finding <laughs> we'll, stalling, I, stalling for time, I do, we'll just, yeah, I do want to we'll say before, do we, say it. before we do the outro and get out of here, uh, I love you guys. I don't I don't say it enough. I'm sure we say it, but we don't say it enough. I know I don't I don't true that and I've I found myself doing it more this past week with yeah. everyone. If I'm thinking about them, I'll just send them it two seconds it takes me just to open up Discord or my text, whatever texting app it is, and just tell someone I'm thinking about them. And it's been really cathartic over this past week. And mm-hmm. I, I hope it doesn't stop because it's it's really opened up a lot of more communication uh, with the people that are close to me, yeah. and the people I value, the people that are important to me. Um, so I just want to let you guys know I love you. Well, I love you back. I love you a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still working on it. Get- <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. Yeah. You're the yeah, newer man. guy, so I, love, I will, love y'all, man. The love I will come with you. time. <laughs> Y'all are cool people. It's like you gotta earn my love. Yeah. <laughs> I love all you guys, especially yeah. you. You know who yes. you are. Yeah. Yep. Oh, I love you all. <laughs> we love you, oh, joiners. Man. Yeah. And we love you, joiners. Yes. We love you. Uh if this is your first time. We love, we love that you loved Gabe and you listened to us for the first time because of him. So yeah. thanks for joining us, even if it's just for this one. We love you. And uh, yeah, I think that's all for now. So uh, no matter what you got going on, as you live, as you work, as you game, may God bless and guide your lives. Peace!